Hey everyone, I'm Anna Huthmaker with Huthmaker Violins and you have found another one of our videos in our Student Stuck at Home series. If you're looking at me going, man, she looks a little bit casual for a violin shop, it is because here in Atlanta, not only are the students stuck at home, Huthmaker Violins had to close to the public. So we're all looking a little bit more casual, but that doesn't stop me from sharing some really great information for you. Even though we're all off of our everyday schedules, doesn't mean we can't engage our brains and learn a little bit more about music. So today, I actually wanna go way back to the beginning and I wanna talk about basic bow care. Now, if you remember correctly, when you first started playing, your teacher said all the time, loosen your bow, loosen your bow, loosen your bow. And a lot of you, frankly, probably didn't really get into the habit early on like you should have. It's one of those things that it just doesn't feel like it's important. It doesn't feel like it does anything. But I'm here to explain to you why it is important. Now, as you know from some of our earlier videos, the bows are made of wood. A lot of the bows are made of wood. Pernambuco in some cases, which if you remember is from Brazil. And if you don't know that, go back and see one of our earlier videos. It's all about it. The thing I want you to notice though, when you look at these bows, they all, every single one of them, have this gorgeous curve down that goes like this. It doesn't matter if it's a violin bow or a bass bow or a cello bow. The thing to know is that curve is not carved into the wood. It's put in there by heat. So um, I've taken classes in bow making and it's really interesting. You make the bow, you carve it, you put the facets in, you do all this stuff, and you have a perfectly straight bow, which if you were to try and play, does not do very well. It doesn't have a, it doesn't draw a nice stick. You need that curve, what we call the camber. So what we do is we take a flame or a heat plate, a hot plate, and we heat the wood and then we bend it. It's an actually a really, it's a really delicate process. You have to be very careful. You can break a bow like that. If anyone ever tells you, oh, your bow needs cambering, you should take it to the violin shop and get it cambered. You wanna make sure those people really know what they're doing because this is not an easy process. The curve that they put in, or that we put in, it has to be really precise. It can't have flat spots, it can't be too curved, or believe it or not, this bow won't really work very well. So there's just a real serious science to it. But here's the thing, if I put tension on this bow, I tighten the screw so that I can play. Now when I play, there's still some downward curve in it, but now there's tension on the stick. So I tighten the bow, I spend a couple of hours playing a little bit of Virgil Cello Concerto, Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, whatever you wanna play. Then you've gotta release that tension from the stick. If you don't, if you throw this in your case and leave it there, that curve is constantly under tension and slowly but surely it starts to straighten, it starts to straighten itself out. This is really bad for a bow. Um, it's very expensive to put the camber back in. It's very difficult, like I said, you have to find somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, and basically, to not loosen your bow, it's just not showing much respect for your bow. It's a very easy step to do to take care of it. Every day when you're done playing, loosen your bow. And what if you have a fiberglass bow? What if you have a school bow or a rental instrument that's a fiberglass bow? I'm not gonna lie to you. If you don't loosen that, it probably won't hurt the bow very much. But again, you're not showing respect for the bow. And you're not training yourself. One day down the road, hopefully not very long, far in the future, you're gonna have a bow that is wooden, that costs $300 or $500 or $1,000. You wanna take really, really good care of that. And the best thing you can do is start training yourself now. Loosen that bow every day. One other thing I wanna throw into the end of this is in one of our earlier videos, we talked all about the horse hair. One of the first things you're also taught in class or from your private teacher is don't touch the hair. Now, if you remember back to that earlier video, I'm showing you all this horse hair and I'm running my fingers through it and everything. I could do that because of two things. Number one, I had just washed my hands, but number two, there was no rosin on the hair. Once we put rosin on the hair, the oil from our skin, sticks to it and it leaves slick spots. When you play, if you ever play and you have nice sound, then you have kind of not so nice sound, then more nice sound, sight down your bow hair. I bet anything you'll see a dark spot. 
where you've actually touched the hair with your, with your fingers or your hand at some point. A lot of musicians will have a dark spot about right here because they'll be playing along and they go to turn the page and they'll throw their hand around it. We do it without even thinking. Don't touch the hair with your hands. It's another way of showing respect for your bow and making your re-hair last longer. I hope that answers some things about how to take care of your bow. I do want you to think about rehairing your bow once a year, minimum. Um, if you practice a whole lot, maybe more often, but you should replace that hair once a year. Also, let's give a little extra credit today. This is a bow by a maker named Morzo. Actually, Morzo Frere, to be exact. M-O-R-I-Z-O-T. And Frere means father. This was the father of the Morzo family of bow makers out of France. So go Google Morizo bows. You'll see some beautiful, beautiful examples of bow making. He's one of the great bow makers. So that get you a little extra learning in your day. I hope that that will all stick in your head. If you have any other ideas for some videos, don't hesitate to give me a holler at huthmakerviolins.com. Now go practice. <laughs>